So first, a quick synopsis of my story in case you are not familiar with it. So my story begins um, when my then husband of 16 years abruptly left me with a text message. Um, I never spoke to him again. So that was <laughs> the ultimate brush off, the ultimate abandonment. And then to complicate matters, I found out that he had been having affairs culminating in bigamy and had also stolen tens of thousands of dollars in, from me. So as you can imagine, um, that became quite a story in my mind. Um, something I, I fixated on as I struggled to come to terms with what my life had become and the sudden loss of the life that I thought I had. And when this happened, I, I really hadn't heard much about sudden spousal abandonment, as it's called. And I thought that, that I was the only one. So I gravitated towards some online groups that were structured for people who had been abandoned by their long-term partners. And at first, I found comfort in this. Um, it told me that I wasn't alone. It depersonalized it. And it felt validating, you know, to, to have these other voices that spoke of similar situations. But in time that started to change, um, all of these groups had one thing in common, and that was that almost every entry was somebody telling the story of their worst day. And I would read these stories and I would identify with these people, so much so that I could feel it. I mean, it was a visceral reaction pulling me back to that day when I received my text. And it no longer was comforting. You know, in fact, I, I would have days that were, were okay, you know, normal ups and downs, but where I wasn't fixated on what had happened to me months prior. And then I would go home and I'd log into my computer didn't have a smartphone then. <laughs> and I would check some of these forums and I'd read those stories and it would take me back and I would end the day in a worse place than I was when I'd started it. And I realized the limitations of fixating on our stories. It's important, you know, it's important to tell the stories, but sometimes it's just as important to let them go. So why do we tell our stories? Why do we fixate on these stories if they ultimately keep us back? Part of it is simply the brain is stuttering. The brain is trying to make sense of things. And let's be honest, it's probably not working very well right now. I know mine sure wasn't. And so it just gets kind of caught in this little loop, this kind of like, you know, think, think of the old record players just sitting right there going back and forth making those obnoxious noises. It's kind of what your brain is doing. Another part of it is we're looking for something. You know, we're, we're thinking if we, if we just keep replaying this over and over again, maybe I can find a loophole. Maybe I can find the exit to this maze. Maybe I can find a way to make it all okay. Maybe I can figure out that it didn't happen after all. Of course, that's all magical thinking doesn't work that way. A lot of times we're also looking for significance. You know, it's, it's something that's so major in our lives that we have to feel like the why and the how had to be just as big as the effects. But sometimes that's not the case. You know, think of an earthquake. Sometimes it's the minor little slips. You know, the tectonic plates might only move a few millimeters, but yet houses are destroyed. So sometimes the, the consequences, the effects, are a lot bigger than what happened. So what we're even looking for may not even be there. And then finally, we fixate on what happened because ultimately we're looking for somebody to fix it. You know, usually the person that did it, um, that's pretty common, but we just, we want, we want it to be okay again. And so it's that going back over it with the hope that somebody will hear us and make it okay. 
will be able to say those magic words to undo all of the pain. But the problem with staying focused on what happened is it really does keep you stuck. Because when you're looking back, you can't move forward. One of the things I like to say is whatever you nurture grows. So when you're putting all of your energy on what happened to you, there's probably not a whole lot of energy left to focus on what are you going to do now? Another thing I like to compare it to is this. Imagine that you're walking one day and you get hit by a car and you're hurt badly. You're looking at months of rehabilitation just to learn to walk to get, walk again. And of course you're angry. You're angry at the driver that hits you. Maybe there are legal proceedings that you have to endure. Maybe they're at fault. Maybe it was just an accident. But here's something that doesn't make sense to focus on. The make and model of the car. Why would that matter? You know, the, the injuries to you are the same. The pain is the same. The rehabilitation that you have to endure is the same. Yeah, it sucks. It's not fair. Ultimately, you know, ideally you wouldn't have been hit at all, but you were. So who cares if it was a Ford or a Toyota? It doesn't matter. And that's kind of how this is too. You know, whatever happened to you, happened to you. And there's going to be those consequences, those effects you have to deal with. So deal with them. But then there's those other things, those details that what actually happened on that day or on those days leading up to that don't matter anymore. Let it go. Let this be your origin story not your life story.